The sounds of people screaming filled my ears, and a dull pain was throbbing in my head. I realized I was lying on a cold, hard surface, and I had a faint metallic taste in my mouth. I gave a sputter and opened my eyes. They felt like they were full of needles. I waited for my pain-filled eyes to focus as the swirls of colors around me began to form shapes, which gradually became more and more detailed. The world lay on its side, and I saw broken, half-demolished buildings weep fire and smoke. The sky was a dark shade of crimson. The sounds of screaming just wouldn't stop, but I couldn't see anyone that could be making the noises. The surface I was laying on turned out to be the remains of a road. The cracked tarmac beneath me was freezing. I peeled my face off the frigid ground and sat up. Every bone in my body ached, and I found it very difficult to move around without a sharp pain jolting through me. I rubbed my throbbing head and groaned. A woman began wailing shrilly above the other screaming voices. But she stopped suddenly, and her cries were replaced with a gurgling sound which also cut out all the other screams that filled the void. I looked at the raging inferno that used to be Des Mones, the capital of Iowa, and stood mesmerized. How could this carnage have taken place in the few hours I'd been asleep? I looked around me. I shuffled around 360 degrees on my ass. The entire city was completely destroyed. The buildings were in ruin. The mainframe of the high-rise apartment blocks and the office buildings were all crumbling. The windows were broken and fire spewed from them, licking at the air that had been tinted a foul gray. I remembered in the night before. Everything was how it should have been. I recall giving my friend Rebecca a call in the evening to organize something at the weekend. We were going to go bowling. After that, I went on my computer for a few hours and watched a horror movie before going to bed. A fact which I'm beginning to regret. With the thought of demons and killers racing through my head, I called it a night and fell asleep in an instant. The fear of a murderer residing under my bed had long since vanished. If something was wrong, or if something happened, I would have known right away. The apartment I live in overlooks the whole city and the walls in my room are paper thin, so the slightest little noise, every scratch, every bump, everything, I could hear it. There is no way this could have happened in such a short space of time without me knowing about it. Unless I had been asleep for much longer than I thought, yes. Yeah, perhaps I was drugged or maybe I had been hit over the head. That would explain me slumped over down on the tarmac. That fucking tarmac was so damn cold. That couldn't have been the case though. Unless I was kept under constant sedatives for a very long period of time. Which seemed rather pointless to me if I was going to be dumped into the street anyways. There is still no way in hell that the entire city could have been destroyed in the time it would have taken me to wake up. So what the fuck could have done all this? The screaming never stopped. With a great strain, I crawled on my hands and knees and awkwardly pulled myself onto my feet. And that's when I noticed it. The tarmac around was covered with dirt. I mean plastered. Buried. There was just dirt everywhere as far as the eye could see all except the one little area I had been lying in. I froze in place. For some reason, I did not like the look of it at all. There was something. I don't know how else to say. Wrong with it. The dirt was heaped very evenly as though someone had carefully applied set amounts to set areas of land and then leveled them out with utmost perfection. It must have taken God knows how long to do. 
How would someone else go about doing something like this anyway? What would they need to put dirt on the ground in a city for? It's not like any crops could grow in the middle of the road. And the question that made me shudder the most, why? I had a nagging feeling in my head, an instinct if you will, to stay away from the dirt, not to touch it no matter what. I didn't know why I felt that way, but I usually follow my gut with these sort of things. I had no idea what I was going to do when I became hungry, felt the urge to sleep, required shelter in the event of a downpour or a storm, or when I felt the need to urinate. I felt like not even my piss should be allowed to touch this cursed soil. But for the time being, I decided to just stay in my little bald patch of tarmac and sit tight in the hopes that someone might come staggering from the ruin looking for help. In my heart, however, I knew this just wasn't going to happen. I tried stretching my arms and legs in an attempt to relieve myself of the aching in my body thinking that perhaps I was just hurting from the cold. Another high-pitched scream. What the hell could be making those sounds? There isn't a damn thing there. After about half an hour of pacing up and down my few feet of clean land, I began to feel a little better, but a new feeling, which was just as bad as the aches and pains had replaced the old. It was an inescapable feeling of total dread. Like something was about to come crashing ferociously from behind one of the ruined structures at any minute and tear me apart. The screams began to get to me. At every cry of anguish, I whipped around in a fear-filled frenzy to try and identify where each one was coming from, each time to no avail. The dread within me grew and grew at every yell, every dull moan and every screeching voice. I lost track of time. Although it felt like an eternity, and I was sadly aware that I had developed a paranoid routine from which I could not break. Scream. Jump. Look around wildly. Tense up nervously. Relax. Scream. I felt like screaming myself. I was beginning to cramp up from being tense for so long. My fear sprued out of me in the form of frightened yelps, cold sweats, and neck hairs that stood to attention profusely. It was at that point I made the mistake of glancing at my feet. I was ankle deep in the satanic dirt that surrounded the dead city. In my blind fear of the unknown, I must have stepped out of my holy ground without even realizing. It was cold, and seethed beneath me. It crawled up my legs and squelched in my shoes, molesting my feet and corrupting them, denaturing my toes and sipping into the cracks of my skin. I felt a warm release slip down my leg and I vomited. The vomit rested on the surface of the dirt and swam there for a moment before bubbling angrily and becoming part of the shadowy mess below. I just stared at where it had been and gave a feeble yelp before the world defocused and I lost all consciousness.